Welcome to the Unlocking Wealth Podcast. Thanks for joining us. We will motivate and inspire you as we share strategies from successful and wealthy individuals. Here is your host, David Ordonez, an entrepreneur and real estate investor. Welcome to a new episode of the Unlocking Wealth Podcast. As a real estate investor, it is very important that you choose the right partners and it's essential to your success to select a good lender. We have trusted InstaLend for our lending needs and they have become our preferred lender for our real estate investments. InstaLend is your private lending partner where you can get a loan commitment the same day and close within days. Grow your real estate portfolio with InstaLend. Tell us about your project. We lend on all product types from short-term, fix and flip, and 30-year rental loans across single and multifamily properties. We also lend on ground up construction and work with first time and experienced operators. Our loan products are also available for foreign national investors. InstaLend, your preferred partner for an Insta good experience. For more information, visit InstaLend.com. I grew up in Prosper, Texas, which is about 45 minutes north of Dallas and the soccer community there was great the soccer there was just really competitive and it was really high level so it was a lot of fun to grow up and play there i would like to play pro as long as i can i plan to stay in the united states i think that could change as my profession just grows and my play progresses i'm so excited today because i have uh, my niece diana ordonez and she's a very successful young athlete. She's a professional soccer player. She's 20 years old, and uh, we're gonna hear her amazing story on how she's become um, one of the top athletes in the country. So that's awesome. Welcome, Diana. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. (laughs) Well, I'm I'm really excited to have you, and obviously, you know, super proud because you're my niece, number one, and, uh, and I know you're starting your career in soccer. So, you know, as, as this being a Unlocking Wealth podcast and, you know, we bring people to talk about their, their success, their achievements, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you are here so you can share your story, your journey um, and on how did you get involved with soccer and everything has, that that has meant to your life. So I remember you when you were a little, little baby and now you're you know, a professional soccer athlete. So that's amazing. Congratulations, Diana. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me about your story. I mean, how was your childhood? How did you get into soccer? Um, Tell me a little bit about you. Yeah. So um, I was born in California, but I only lived there until I was like five years old. So I tell everybody that I'm from Texas. I was raised in Texas. Um, But yeah, I started playing soccer or at least kicking a ball around since I could walk. I know that for sure. Um, My parents had me on teams already when I was like three years old. So um, I think a lot of me wanting to play soccer came from obviously my dad who played soccer pretty much his whole life and my brothers who also played soccer that I was really close with and they were really talented. So just kind of wanting to hang out with them and be around them um got me interested in soccer uh, and then obviously you know as i got older i started to grow my own passion for it and it brought me here so that's awesome so what was like what how old were you when you kind of you kicked in and you're like you know this is what i want to do and i want to go all the way right because i know you obviously um you know your brothers um and your dad and they're you know soccer fans and then they've always played soccer so obviously they were a big influence on you but when was the moment that you actually made the decision for yourself how old were you i think it's kind of hard to say but i would say like the idea of of i want to be a professional soccer player probably started coming to my head by the time i was like 10 years old like i think i was pretty young when i thought like i didn't even actually know anything about it obviously like if that was even you know popular or if that was even going to be an option for me but like i knew that there was professional women's sports and I want to be a professional soccer player. So I would say that idea has been in my head since I was pretty young, but more like knowing this could like actually happen for me and like more realistically knowing was probably around the time that I was in high school that I realized that I could, um, as long as I, 
you know, kept doing what I was doing and working hard that I could make it that far and become a professional. So. Okay. And uh, um, tell me how was your, you know, your, your beginning. So you started playing in different teams. At what time did you get to play like a more of a structured club? Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So I would say like the majority of the, you know, real structure came from when I was living in Texas and um, I was playing on a, on an FC Dallas team that was a year older than I was. And they were like moving divisions and I couldn't move up with them because I was too young. And I had to switch coaches, which I was like, not happy about. Like, I really didn't want to switch teams. Like I love my teammates and my coach and everything. Um, and it actually turned out to be like the best thing for me. And I became like really, really close with that coach. And he ended up being my coach for like eight years, I think. Um, so he coached me up uh, all the way to my college years and everything. But um, yeah, that that became like very serious once I moved teams and and the coach was actually just starting a team around my age group. So we were like at the very beginning and there was like no girls on the team. Like there was only like a few people. We we're still playing like eight V eight and we had to kind of like build our way up to have enough players um, to play, you know, the full game. But yeah, um, his name's Matt Grubb. And that was someone that definitely kind of like changed the game for me as far as like taking it more seriously and, and developing more than anything rather than just kind of being out there just to play. Like he actually did a good job of like developing his players and making them ready to go on and play in college and stuff. Okay, so you graduated from high school mm -hmm. and um, you're playing for what team at that moment? FC Dallas. FC Dallas, okay. And then tell me the story on how you make the jump for, to college and you start playing um, uh, you know, in, in the team for the college and just tell me the story about that. Yeah. So it's really hard because they started recruiting so early back then, which now I think there's rules in place that they're not allowed to do it, allowed to do it as early. But I was already making college visits when I was a, the first day of my freshman year oh, wow. when you could talk to college coaches. And I'm young for my grade. So the first day of my freshman year, I was 13 years old looking to see where I want to go to college, which is like super overwhelming. And I feel like a lot of people really enjoy that process. But for a lot of people, it can be really, really stressful. And I was one of those, like, it was really, really hard for me. And I didn't know how to say no. So I would get a call from a college that I knew I would never in a million years want to go to. And I'd be like, sure, like, I'll see if I can visit or I, yeah, I have interest when I had none because I just, I was 14. Like I didn't yeah. know, what, I didn't know how to talk to these people. So that was really hard, which I'm glad the rules have changed from that. <laughs> but in the beginning, like I thought I wanted to stay close to home. So I had committed to a school in Texas and after like starting to go to national team camps and stuff like that, I just kind of realized that it wasn't really the right fit for me. And like, if I wanted to really push myself and get better and go to a place where, you know, I would have the opportunity to like win a championship and things like that, I was gonna have to like get out of my comfort zone and not stay so close to home, which was when I started looking again and I was going, you know, East coast, West coast, looking further away from Texas. Um, and that's how I ended up visiting UVA through a teammate that I had played with for years. Um, she actually, she's two years older than me and she went to UVA and without her, like, I honestly don't even think I would have visited the school if, had she not gone there. So I do give her a lot of credit for me going over there and visiting, but <laughs> yeah, once I, I visited, um, I was between like a couple schools in the end, but that's, that's what stuck. And, and I'm so happy with my decision. I, I wouldn't change it at all if I could go back. That's great. Now, now, when you're on that process, right, from like 13, 14, 15 years old, and you're already visiting colleges, so I'm backing up a little bit, mm -hmm. um, you're already being a, you're very um, successful at your team, right? I mean, you're top scorer, you're, that's why you're getting so, so much attention from these colleges, right? Mm -hmm. How was that process for you? I mean, you're 13, 14 years old, you're starting to kind of have this taste of success, and uh, how is that dream now, you know, at, at that moment, how was that dream in your head? Yeah, I feel like the first time I ever played in a college showcase, actually, um, I was younger than all the girls that I was playing with. And and I told my dad, I was there's like coaches just like on the sidelines, just watching the game. And I told my dad, I was like, do you think anyone's going to want me? Like, I don't know, like, you know, and it's so weird because I had always been so confident. But when you're in that kind of situation, it's like, well, maybe maybe they'll want me maybe they won't and you know luckily I'm, I'm very blessed and and some schools wanted me so um it's it's definitely overwhelming but it's nice to see your work pay off in that way like you're getting 
credit and um, like you're actually getting looks from schools that are very prestigious and it, and it kind of just shows you a reflection of everything that you've been working on up until that point, especially mm -hmm. to be so young. I feel like it can kind of be hard to see the fruits of your labor at a young age. Yeah. So I feel like that like college recruiting phase is kind of like a reflection of the work that you've put in since you've been even just like middle school and high school, which is crazy because you are so young, so, but yeah. I mean, yeah. Now, how how was that process for you? I mean, because you're you know you're doing a lot of things at a very young age. Maybe you're I mean, and obviously everybody sees your success and you're the top scorer and you're going to you know you went to uh, you still are in uh, University of Virginia, but during all that time, all that process, you're sacrificing a lot. You're training a lot. I mean, your your family is committed to obviously support you. How is that process for you when you're 15 and you want to, you know, maybe go out and have fun with your friends and, and you're sacrificing all that time so you can become what you become? How is that process for you or what, when you look back right now? I mean, what I mean, it was it was really, really hard. That was something I struggled with a lot when I was in high school, just like all the things that I missed out on, like even things that you look back and it just seems dumb, like prom or like things like that. And like. I've missed so many family events, which was the thing that I think hurt me the most because you know how like close I am to my family and everything. And to have to miss out on like a wedding or a birthday or like anything, it was just like really, really hard because to me, it's like, it's just practice. It's just a game. Like, why do I have to be there? Why can't I be with my family celebrating something that's really important to me? But I mean, when I look back, of course it paid off, like absolutely 100% paid off, but it's it's still hard because there are things that you do miss that you're never going to get to do again so that's kind of a hard thing to to, to deal digest. with especially, yeah especially at a younger age when you just don't understand really before but i mean i would say it was worth it but i could see how for a lot of people it might not be worth it mm. um but you know luckily I, I i think that's been. I, I assume a lot of athletes at that young age sometimes they obviously you know they, they throw the towel they're like you know I'm done I don't want to do this right and and what was your motivation or what was what kind of kept you going you know and and press forward you know knowing that you're missing these things that you're sacrificing time with your family <laughs> um, sacrificing things with your friends or events or whatever so how what was that force like kind of kept you going, you know, this is, I mean, this is what I've chosen and I'm just going to move forward. What was that? I think like trying to look at the bigger picture, like in the grand scheme of things, that event that I was missing or the thing that I couldn't go to is going to end up being really, really small when I get to where I am now. And hopefully years in the future that I'm still playing this game for as long as I can, like, I'm not even going to be worried about that thing that I missed, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, just, I feel like the motivation was just that like, I've always wanted to be the best at what I do. And it sounds like very cliche, but <laughs> for some people, like that's just what it takes, you know? Like, of course. I knew that, that I was at a pretty high level when I was in, in high school and that I had a lot of potential to, to go pro and, and to play with great teams and to play at a really high level. And I think that was something that, you know, I had to be reminded of that's like, if you want to get there, there are going to have to be sacrifices that are made in order to do that. And every time I made one of those, it was just another one of those things. Like, this is just something else I'm going to have to miss to get to where I want to be. And I think that can help people or it could hurt people. But for me, that's, that's what worked. It was just like in 10 years, I'm not going to remember that I didn't go to the prom or that I didn't walk at graduation, you know, my high school graduation, like I didn't walk. So it's just like things like that, that it it hurts when you're going through it. At that moment, but correct. Yeah, but I mean, to be where I am now, if that's what contributed to me being here, then it's worth it. Yeah, and that's amazing what you say, because you know, you're a young, you're 20 years old, and to think and as of, you know, and, and have that perspective of things at this young age is, is amazing. So, uh, you know, that's, that's great. I mean, that's what kept you going, um, you know. Now, Going back to where you were, so you graduated from from high school, and then you decided to go to University of Virginia. Mm -hmm. So tell me that transition. Obviously, you're already playing at a high level. You're already very very competitive. 
Um, tell me how that transition was to go to Virginia and start college there and start playing for the team. Yeah, so I graduated high school semester early. So I was, um, my first semester in college was the spring of 2019. And that was like a huge deal for me because I had to leave home early. Like I was 17, I was just kind of jumping into college, like just crazy. But I think that spring like really like set me up very, very well for um, going into the fall because we college season is in the fall. So to go there in the spring, I was also homeschooled my last two semesters of high school. So to go back into being in school and going to class and interacting with people and just like the weight of soccer, school, navigating a new place, like all of that, I could just only imagine how much pressure that is when you also have to do that and then go into your regular season, like right off the jump when you come in the fall. So for me to have been able to start going to classes and meeting the team and just practicing and playing in spring games that don't really matter, you know, mm. like I got to kind of get integrated and like get comfortable with where I was and the people that I was with and my teammates and everything before having to just be in the season. And I think that semester gave my teammates and my coaches a chance to kind of see the kind of player that I was and, and let me get more comfortable so that when we did get to the fall, I was a starter in our first game as a freshman. So that spring season was like super important for me. And it was hard because I didn't want to leave home early or anything, but again, it was worth it. And it gave you, it gave I, you an edge. It gave you an edge yeah. for mm -hmm. sure. Now, and, how's, how was your routine when you got there? I mean, you wake up very early, like go through your, your, your schedule. How do you, I mean, your training, how does, how does so that is? in the spring, it's morning practices and if the fall you have afternoon practices so we would wake up i think our practices were probably around like eight in the morning something like fairly early and i was living in dorms obviously and like if you're a first year you don't have a car so it was just kind of like those uh freshman kind of pains i guess but um yeah I'd get up go to practice and then after practice you're like running to the locker room to get a shower before you got to go to class and then like you feel like you need to eat so like it's just like a whole lot of like scrambling i feel like <laughs> and then when you're a freshman like you have all these other obligations that like the older girls on the team don't have like for student athletes they have like mentorship where you would have to go like two hours a week and you would have to sit down with like a mentor and like do your work so that they know that you're doing your homework like things like that that's just like extra time and spending extra you know, effort trying to get places and get things yeah. done. It was really busy, but I think it's helpful to have such a like strict schedule and just stick to that. Cause you get like, you know, your routine of doing the same thing every day, which I think helps in a sense, but it was really busy, especially cause I hadn't been going to school. Yeah. I was just doing school online. So to have to like learn that over again was, was hard. And obviously UVA is a very prestigious school and, and the, the students there are, extremely smart so that kind of adjustment was was interesting in the classroom too so you're you're obviously training um playing in the team and at the same time your your major is sociology right so you're studying as well and tell me a little bit about what what shifting a little bit to your career so you're studying sociology what's mm -hmm. behind that what what would you like to um accomplish with that you know with that um major yeah, so it's funny because like what I originally intended is not what I intend now. <laughs> Naturally, <laughs> sometimes that's how it goes. But um, I was really into criminology and like social justice. And so that's why I kind of went like the sociology route. Um, and I just realized like how broad it was and how many different kind of like social issues it does cover. Um, and it was just really engaging to me. And for me, like in school, if I wasn't like super, super into the subject that I was learning, then I wouldn't put my effort in to learn it because I didn't really care for it. So I wanted to pick something that I knew like was going to interest me and it was it was broad and I could kind of take it wherever I wanted to. Um, and so that was kind of like my reasoning behind picking it. And now, like, obviously looking back, I mean, I was 17 years old when I had to pick my major, like I didn't know <laughs> really. Um, I wish I would have done something a little bit more like marketing because I would like to stay in sports after I, I'm done playing and do kind okay. of like marketing. But I think sociology also does help you with that because it helps you, you know, understand people and, yeah, and for sure. that they're into and how they think. And oh, yeah. so I feel like in a different kind of way, it still works out. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, I would hope to go into some sort of like marketing, marketing and business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, I have a, I know very good marketers that they have background on sociology and psychology. Okay. So you know that could be kind of like a step for you. But no, that's awesome. So you would after you retire playing soccer, you will still like to be involved in sports in, in in some doing some kind of activity with marketing or stuff like that. That's your goal. Yeah. That's yeah, great. I think so. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so you're you're already playing at uh, for 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 college, and how is that already uh, happening? You're you start being a, one of the top uh, players, I would say, in the league. Correct? Kind of tell me the story and your you know three years. Is this is your um? It's going to be your last year in college, right? Pretty much. Um, so I played three years. Three years. And yeah, instead of four. And now okay. I'm done, obviously. But right. yeah, um, it was it, college soccer was so much fun, like really, really fun. And our coaches were incredible. And the, my teammates were, were so fun to not only like play with, but also just be around and be friends with, especially with like COVID and everything happening while I was um, in college. Like we only had each other, like we weren't allowed to hang out with like other people. We were just kind of in our bubble. But yeah, I mean, my first season was, I couldn't have asked for anything better, honestly. Like I s scored a lot. Um, I led the ACC in goals, which was, That's um, which is, yeah, it was really rewarding for me to be able to, to do that. Um, and again, just feel like so blessed that I've been mostly healthy throughout my entire college career, which is something that I think can be taken for granted if, mm. if you never really get hurt, you know? So um, I thank God for that, for sure, for keeping me healthy right. throughout all of college and everything. But yeah, my first season was good. And then second season was COVID. And that one was, that one was interesting because instead of only playing in the fall, we played in the fall and in the spring. So we played our NCA tournament in the spring and we actually made it to the final four, which was like incredible. Like that was a really, really cool experience. And it's funny because we actually played it here in North Carolina where it's like where our fields are now, like my protein plays there. Okay. So yeah, so I've played there a couple of times, which I think is cool. That's it's pretty great. comfortable. <laughs> That's but, great. Yeah, and then my last season, I was kind of entertaining the idea of leaving early before the season had started. But again, there was so many factors that that came into play that could have changed that decision. Like, like I said, I could have gotten hurt and had to stay. Mm -hmm. I could have not had a great season and had to stay again because, you know, you want to get drafted and everything. But um, yeah, again, I feel super blessed in that way. I feel like everything that, um, that happened at school was just set up perfectly and planned perfectly to, to lead me here and to get me here early and with my degree. So that was something that was really important to me too, was that I wasn't going to leave unless, you know, I was going to finish school. So yeah, it's, it's worked out really well. That's great. Now you're finishing college, but actually last December you got drafted for, also, before I go to the to, to the to your pro pro team, um, while you're playing in college, you're also being um, called on the U.S. Uh, national team for like the U23. So tell me your experience about you know playing for the national. I mean for 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 the U.S. Yeah, so I started getting called into camps when I was 15, um, and that was another thing that was a very very cool experience, but it was also really really hard because. I was missing school like two weeks every month. So that's why I had to be homeschooled because I kept missing school, kept missing school when I couldn't do it anymore. Um, so that was really fun. And and I met like a lot of great teammates that I'm still friends with. Um, and yeah, we, I got to travel to like the coolest places. Like I've been to China, we've yep, played in Argentina, yeah. like we've, we've just been all these places. So that is like a blessing from that experience that has been really cool is just like, being able to travel to all these places at such a young age and while you get to play soccer and represent your country. Uh, and represent what, what the US. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. And recently, like you said, I went to the U23 camp. Um, that was in January. And that was cool because we got to play against the full women's national team, which was a cool experience just to kind of see how you match up against those kind of players, you know, that, that are at the top. Um, and yeah, the people that were in camp were great and the girls were so fun to play with. And it was a short camp, but it was nice because it was right before we started preseason here with the pro team. So it was kind of like a coming off the off season and then getting into camp 
and getting to kind of sharpen up a little bit and get in a competitive environment before coming to the preseason for like my first time. It was nice to be able to play a little bit before having to come here and then start playing. Yeah, yeah. that's great. So when did you move to, so so you, um, you got drafted by um, North Carolina Courage, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you got drafted in December. Mm -hmm. Right, and then you moved. When did you move to um, to Raleigh in January or? Yeah, I moved to Raleigh in January. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, and uh, tell me how is that going? I mean, great achievement. I mean, you got drafted in December. Were you expecting to to get drafted by this team? Tell me that experience because I mean, yeah. it's, it's like, it seems surreal. So, yeah, <laughs> so actually, I was not expecting to be drafted by this team for. I would say like once the draft order came out, the team that had the six pick switched. It was the same team, which I thought I was going to go to for like for probably like a month. Um, and then the day before the draft, three different teams got the six pick. Like it just kept switching between people were trading picks and everything. And then it landed on the courage. Um, and then during the draft, I was pretty sure that that's, that's where I was going to go. Kind of when I was watching and seeing things play out, I was like, okay, I think six is like my number and that's where I'm going to go. Um, and yeah, so not until like the day before was I expecting to come here. But <laughs> once I saw that they had this pick, that was kind of what we were looking at, what we were hoping for. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been great. And I, I feel like it was nice that it kind of was a little bit unexpected because it kind of came out of nowhere, but it's been amazing. Like it's been a huge blessing to be here and the area that we live in is so nice and, and they, put us up in a great apartment. I love where I live and there's a lot to do. And my teammates are are really great, which which is nice because I know it can be kind of strange, kind of new players in a locker room and, and that dynamic and having people that are on the team that are 10 years older than I am. Like I didn't really know, you know, how that dynamic was gonna be, but everyone is is really, really nice and practice is so much fun. It's really, really competitive. Oh, um, sure. And there's just so many great players that have been in the league for so long that are on our team. So it's like so nice to get to learn from people who, oh, yeah. who have like paved the way Their for this experience. Yeah. 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 That's that's such an amazing uh, thing that you're in a pro team and such a great achievement. Congratulations, Deanna. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Um, so you're enjoying the experience, right? I mean, now you're living by yourself in, in an apartment, living in Raleigh you're getting to know your teammates. So when did the uh, training start for this, preparing for the new season? Yeah, so we started, the first day of preseason was February 1st. Okay. So we just finished one month down. <laughs> okay. When does the season start, the actual season? Yeah, so the season starts with an opening tournament of all the teams. It's not just like a regular season, kind of. Um, so we have our first game at home March 19th. Okay. How many teams are in the league? There are 12 teams. 12 teams, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, great. And uh, so you're getting ready to, um, you know, to, to, to have your first professional soccer game in, in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. How is that feeling? It's exciting. Um, I feel like right now, you know, it's early and, and a, a lot of rookies, you know, they, they struggle with like getting playing time. And, and I know that that um, could be a reality for me, which is something I had to, think about when making this decision, you know, if I wanted to come early because I'm young and, and I do need some, some experience playing. So, um, I'm hopeful that, you know, I'll get, I'll get some playing time, but I do, I do understand that, um, the reality is that it's hard and I might yeah. not get on the field. And that's something that, you know, I, I haven't really had to deal with in my career other than on the national team. I, mm. I, I did not play that much when I was on the, on the national team. So that was like the last time I had experience with that, but, um, I'm just, I'm ready to be patient and if I need to be, you know, but I'm also, I'm working hard and I'm doing what I can to, to get on the field. So hopefully I will see some playing time, but, but I'm still excited. I mean, regardless, you know, if I'm starting or if I'm on the bench, like just to be in that environment and, and compete for something with my team, I'm, I'm really excited. That's now, now you said patience. I mean, you've been patient, uh, you know, because I, what I see now, especially young generations is they. They want this, you know, immediate gratification. They think success is achieved like overnight, right? But you're you're an example of dedication, hard work, sacrifices, and patience, right? I mean, because you you didn't come here, 
uh, overnight. I mean, it has taken you pretty much all your your younger years, and you're still so young. So, mm-hmm. um, but that's normal, right? I guess that um, it, it will take some time until obviously the coach starts knowing you more, knowing you better, and right. obviously you're working hard uh, to be able to be on the on the starter lineup, uh, and I'm sure you will for sure. I mean, thank you. <laughs> All right, so now tell me a little bit about, um, you know, as you know, this is a, an Unlocking Wealth podcast, right? And I like to share how, you know, the mindset works as well. Mm-hmm. So what's your, I mean, you know, I'm sure there's days that you woke up or you wake up and you're like, you know, maybe you're not as motivated. Um, what what keeps you motivated? What keeps you going? Is, uh, is it your family? Is it you? spirit you know it may be god if you're spiritual what what is it that force that kind of you know when those days are like you're like oh man i feel so lazy today i don't feel like going to practice or whatever it is right because we all have our days yeah how is it for you um i would say definitely a big drive of my motivation does come from my faith um and i just i know how blessed i am to be in this position and and I've been given, you know, the ability to to compete and to play at this level. And um, honestly, a lot of my motivation also comes from just knowing how many people would would love to be in the position that I'm in. Um, and that's that's heavy, but it's true. And so, you know, that's something that I do think about sometimes is like somebody wishes they were getting up at 6 a.m. to go train with their pro team. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, we don't have to get up that early, but you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's a combination of things for sure. And my family of 100%, just having their support and knowing how much my parents have sacrificed too mm. for not only me, you know, like my entire family for me to be here and, um, you know, all the things they've done to set me up for success and so that I can be the in the best position possible to be successful like it's not like i don't want to let them down because i know i won't let them down but Mm. more like i want them to to also reap the benefits of my hard work as well as i do you know they they love coming to my games. they love watching me play they love seeing any team that i'm on win um and so yeah i think it's a combination of things for sure Mm -hmm. but yeah okay what are you um what w- what would you say to younger athletes that are trying to make it onto the space in soccer which is you know your area of expertise uh mm-hmm. young kids um that are looking at you like you know an example now right you're becoming an example for younger uh, girls and boys like for everybody what would you tell them to, i mean what does it take to get where you are and obviously things that you can control right because obviously and you just said it you know your your family support is so important right and you you have that blessing you've always had that support from your family so now when it comes to you what does it take or share with with our listeners just a couple of things that you think are critical uh, on the mindset on your habits um to achieve this kind of success yeah I think um, it takes a lot of discipline and that's something that I think is obviously a good practice, no matter what you're doing, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a student, you know, an adult in whatever job that you do. I think discipline is really, really important because if you can't hold yourself accountable to do the things that you need to do to be successful, when you get older, no one else is going to be sitting there to do it for you. Like when you're younger, your parents can tell you, you got to go to practice or you got to go to school or you got to do your homework but no one's going to do that when you're in college or when you're a professional, you know, you have to take that upon yourself. So to practice discipline when you're younger will only set you up to, you know, be able to hold yourself accountable when you're older and you're pursuing whatever goal it is that you have. Um, I would say discipline is 100% a huge factor. Um, but also trusting like your own, process and your own journey which i feel like is something that people say a lot but it's true like you can't compare yourself to anything that anybody else is doing even if it's even if it's two girls playing soccer and they both want to be professional soccer players like there's just so many things that are different in each and every person's like journey to get there that you can't compare what you have going on to what somebody else is doing or their successes or their failures to yours i think comparison can can be really like detrimental to the way that you see yourself 
especially if you do it, you know, in a negative way, even in a positive way, if you think you're doing better than somebody, <laughs> like they're probably doing better than you in something else. So it doesn't matter, you know? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So yeah, I would say just focusing Fight. on yeah. Fight your yeah. battle. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. do your own thing. Right. Yeah. No, that's yeah. great. Focus that's a great, on, that's a great advice. Mm -hmm. That's a great advice. Um, so discipline number one, a, and just basically, you know, fight your own battle. Don't pay attention to whatever is whoever is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, compete with yourself, right? Is mm -hmm. is is in a way kind of cliche too, right? I mean, just compete yeah. with yourself and don't worry about what the others are doing. Uh, run your own race. Yeah. Um, what's I mean? I know your big your next big step, obviously, is playing pro. Mm -hmm. um, what how you see diana ordonez in in 10 years from now where you see yourself when you're 30. um that's a good question <laughs> um <laughs> i i have high hopes for myself um and i think you know like i said i'm big in my faith and god has blessed me so much to be here and i i think as long as i i stay true to what i believe and and what i know and i honor him and everything that i do that I'll have success one way or another, whether it's it's in soccer or I play one year and I'm done. <laughs> I don't know, but um, I do hope to be playing for as long as possible. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think, I think I'm, you know, a little bit different of a player than what you would typically see, um, especially in my position. But my hope is that is that I would I would have a pretty big influence on this game. And I know that's that's a tall task. Um, but like I said, I'm I'm hopeful and I'm faithful that um, I can I can do some pretty big things in this this game. That's amazing. I mean, uh, to have that such a, a winning mentality at such a young age, I do believe that you'll make history uh, for this sport for women for sure. Thank uh, you. I think you're an example of that. Um, do you think you're gonna play or do you visualize yourself playing a World Cup? Yeah, I do. Hopefully sooner rather than later. But <laughs> for sure. Well, for sure, I'm coming to see you wherever, <laughs> wherever it is. <laughs> That's great. Um, I, I know you shared earlier um, that um, you had a, a coach that really made a difference on you. Would you say that he was one of your biggest mentors? Yeah, for sure. He he was the first coach that I had that was very like real with me because I was still young when I moved to his team. So at that age, you're still kind of getting like babied and, and it's not real like coaching, you know, it's just kind of someone just there for you and putting you on the field. And I feel like he was the first coach that I had that really kind of like put his foot down and, and made it serious for me. Um, and I think at some point you do need that in your, you know, when you're younger still, mm -hmm. even though people may think you are too young for that at some point, like if you want to be serious about it, you need it. And I think he was that that person for me. Great. Any other mentor throughout your yeah. throughout your your career up to this point? Yeah, I think you know at every stage I've had different ones, um, but consistently has has been my parents for sure. Because I think something that's really helpful to me about my parents is that my dad really caters to like what I need in soccer and like my decision making in in my career and and the things that I do on the field. And my mom is more like emotionally and like spiritually as a person, she's kind of my support system for that. So I feel like having, you know, them serve two very different things and like feed, you know, positivity into two different things in my life is really, really helpful. And it makes kind of like the complete person that Perfect. I need to be because I get what I need from my dad when I'm on the field and I get what I need from my mom when I'm off of it. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say they both they don't both do both things because they do, but primarily that's that's how they help me and, and they've been doing that since I mean I can remember. That's great. Well the perfect team then mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> um any book uh, that you um uh, read that I have uh, that you have read that has um, created or made a huge impact on you um you want to share uh, yes um there's a book i don't remember the author it's called okay. get out of your head um and it's a spiritual book so it's based you know on scripture okay. and everything like that but that that was a really good one it's it's based on the verse of like don't conform to the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
And I think that's something that's really important, like you're saying about mindset. If, if you know, obviously if people are spiritual and, and do read books like that, that's kind of like the primary kind of books that I read. Um, but yeah, in more ways than one, you know, people do need to, to transform their thinking, you know, whether it is spiritual or not your mind is is extremely powerful um and that book really helped me acknowledge that and kind of you know rewire the way that i thought about some things and and it's helped me be you know more positive and yeah yeah Yeah, i will add that um you know visualization process the visualization process and um is so important is actually key right because when you visualize Mm -hmm. things actually they actually happen and uh Mm -hmm. Um, there's a um, a good friend of mine that he's also in real estate and he says that you know 90% of the things actually start happening in our mind and then just 10% is the actual mechanicals of it right but it has to start right here so that's great I mean I like I'm, I'm, I haven't read that books but I'm gonna check it out is there anybody in the in the game of soccer that you admire it could be obviously a woman or a man um, somebody that would you like to share that you admire? Yeah, I think this is a very obvious answer, so I'm sorry. But um, Messi is obviously someone I admire a lot. And not just because he's literally incredible and he's just like super talented, but I think the story that comes with like his size is something that's like really, really interesting to me and how, you know, everything he did growing up was just that much harder because he's smaller than everybody that he played against. And so many people just thought that he was good enough, but was never going to be big enough to actually compete and be a great player. And he ended up being, you know, one of the best players to ever play the game and still plays. So I think just because he had to overcome that kind of adversity along with how great he ended up being, I think that's something that I admire a lot. And you went to see him on a Barca game, right? A Barca Did, Real Madrid I, game. Yes, that was the best game I ever saw in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And how do you feel now that he's not in Barcelona anymore? You know? um, I think it's okay. I think he did. I think he did his time. He did his time for sure. Um, and I don't. I I like. PSG, so I don't mind. <laughs> Good. What about any any um, any women in the in the game that you admire? Um, yeah, there's there's a lot. I mean, there's one that's in this league in particular. Her name's Rachel Daly, um, and she she's English, and she plays my position, which obviously you know rings a little bit closer to home that you know she plays my position. But I think she's just an incredible player and. I've seen her more with her national team than I have seen her in the NWSL. Um, But she just seems to demand excellence from the people that she's playing with. And that's something that I admire a lot. And I would love from a teammate, which I do have plenty that are like that. But I think that's someone that I've seen like visibly on the field that like you can tell that she is not getting any other result but a win as like to the best of her ability. And she's going to make sure that everyone else around her is doing the best that they can and that's that's how I would like to be as a teammate when I'm when I'm older and you know have a little bit um more more experience that would be something that I would want to take on as that kind of role but that's great that was awesome Deanna thank you so much for um you know being here with us today as our guest and sharing your amazing story your amazing journey I wish you the best on your new professional team um, I will see you and I think you're definitely going to play a World Cup so I'm looking forward to that but um, good luck in everything you do you're an amazing person inside and out uh, you're an example for in, not only for our family but I think for you know all the young athletes out there uh, so keep going and um, we wish you the best thank you I really appreciate it and thank you for having me I loved it it was so fun awesome thank you Diana. Mm-hmm.